Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory and grace Turn your eyes to the hillside Where justice and mercy embrace There the Son of God gave his life for us And our measureless debt was erased Jesus, to you we lift our eyes Jesus, our glory and our prize We adore you, behold you Our Saviour ever true Oh Jesus we turn our eyes to you. Turn your eyes to the morning and see Christ the Lion Awake, what a glorious dawn, fear of death is gone, for we carry his life in our veins. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes, Jesus, our glory and our Savior ever true, oh Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Turn your eyes to the heavens, our King will return for his own. Every the glory to Jesus above. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our prize. We adore you, behold you, a Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our prize. We adore you, behold you, our Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus. We turn our eyes to you. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to worship in your home. 
Our call to worship this morning is very loosely based around Psalm 111. So let us pray. By this we know the presence of the Lord. It is in the rising of the sun, or in someone's smile, or in the sound of laughter. It is in the scent of a flower, in a snowdrop heralding the promise of spring. By this we know the power of the Lord. It is in the healing of hurts, in the forgiveness of sin. It is in the giving of gifts beyond all expectation. It is in the grace-filled love that comes from Jesus Christ. So let us put aside our worries for the world as we join from our own homes and come together through our praises to give thanks with our whole hearts, to worship God, whose presence and power endures forever. Amen. to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. Oh, ye who hear, brothers and sisters, truly, Um, today's passage um, is centering along this idea of authority and what do you think of when you hear the word authority and who do you think of that actually brings authority so for example the police uh, the law of the land is perhaps our authority uh, that we look up to and that we um, are very wary of. 
we may even think of, for example, a head teacher or a head mistress who um, is basically in charge of a school, even the teacher perhaps, and the student knows who's got the authority within the school. It may even be your parents, that parental figure, okay, um, in telling you what to do, what not to do, or as you're older, giving you advice as well on what to do and what not to do. So today, when we think about authority, we're thinking about the passage of how Jesus had got to the synagogue and how he drove out an impure spirit from um, a particular man. Now, that's really important because what we're finding out is that basically this spirit listened to Jesus as an authority. So to kind of demonstrate this, usually, sometimes, when we think of people in authority, it literally goes in the sieve and it comes out the other end and we maybe don't do what we should in regards to really respecting that authority and understanding it. And respecting, in this case, Jesus and his word, perhaps. But in the passage, we hear about how this man literally has this impure um, spirit. And just like a sponge, this spirit literally soaks up everything that Jesus commands and says. And that lets us know that basically Jesus' authority is absolutely second to none. That even the demons, even those bad spirits, are the ones that are listening to Jesus' authority, to his commands. So as we look at the week ahead, maybe we think about how we are supposed to obey what Jesus says, that we are to listen to his word and to his instructions and also to stop talking and to listen to the advice that he may give us, okay, to lead us on with a particular issue. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you that um, you are commanding over everyone and everything on the planet. Lord, we thank you so much that you give us uh, so much to be thankful for every day. And at times we may moan, at times we may complain, um, but at the end of it, there is a lot that we go through in regards to suffering that is also a way of you making us stronger, of us relying more on you and making our faith deeper. And so, Lord, we thank you that we can ask you to give us the strength to help us each day take on whatever that day may bring. And so, Lord, we ask you to be with us in the week ahead. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Prayer of Adoration and Confession. Let us pray. We bring our busy minds before you in humble worship. We deliberately pause to dwell in your love. O oh God, you spoke your word and revealed your good news in Jesus. Fill all creation with that word again, so that by proclaiming your joyful promises to all nations and singing of your glorious hope to all peoples, we may become one living body your incarnate presence here on your beautiful but broken earth. We know your son's authority is found in integrity and living truth, not the assertion of power over others. Open our imaginations to new dimensions of your love and heal us of all that keeps us from you and from one another, that we might grow into the vision you reveal to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. 
Let us confess our sins, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and let us seek God's forgiveness. Almighty God, we confess before you our own sin and the sin of the church and the sin of the world in which we share. We have not loved you with our whole being. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive us when we turn from you. Release us from the burden of our past and remake us in your image and likeness. Let us pause for a moment of personal prayer as we each make our confession to God, our Heavenly Father. The God of new beginnings releases us from past wrongs, refreshes our energy in the present and renews us for the future. Be assured of God's forgiveness. Thanks be to our ever loving God. Amen. Good morning. I just wanted to give a, a, a short introduction to uh, the readings that we're about to hear. The first is a psalm of praise, much like the, the song that we heard just a moment ago, indescribable, uncontainable. You know, it's full of praising God for who he is. And, and it's a it's a wonderful psalm. Um, one of the things that's uh, particularly special about it is that it's actually an acrostic 
poem. So every uh, letter of every uh, line in that psalm begins with uh, a new letter of the Hebrew alphabet. That's one of the things that doesn't translate into English, but it's, it's very clever. Um, and perhaps that gives us an idea that, that we might, uh, when we've got a quiet moment uh, this coming week, uh, take uh, our own alphabet, our A to Z, and just try and think ourselves about ways that we might praise God with all of our letters, with all of our words, with uh, A to Z of our alphabet. The, the second thing that, that I wanted to mention is, is about our, our second reading that we're uh, about to hear. And one of the things that strikes me about this reading is that this is the first time we, we're told that Jesus uh, was teaching in Mark's Gospel. It's the beginning of his teaching ministry. And yet uh, we are not told anything about what Jesus was actually saying or was actually teaching. What we're taught in instead is that Jesus spoke with authority. I think of the Bananarama song, it's not what you do, it's the way that you do it, or, or to misquote that song actually. It, it, that's, that's what I get from this reading. Jesus spoke and taught with authority. We're going to hear that now. Let's listen to our readings. Psalm 101. I will sing of your love and justice. To you, Lord, I will sing praise. I will be careful to leave a, lead a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will conduct the affairs of my house with a blameless heart. I will not look with approval on anything that is, a, that is vile. I hate what faithless people do. I will have no part of it. The perverse of heart shall be far from me. I will have nothing to do with what is evil. Whoever slanders their neighbour in secret, I will put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, I will not tolerate. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. The one whose way of life is blameless will minister to me. No one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. I will cut off every evildoer from the city of the Lord. Amen. The reading is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. The man with the unclean spirit. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Amen. Angels and 
to sin us did, planning to sin us good. It's God turns all their guilty fear, it turns their hell to hell, it turns their hell to Prisoners fat as brings and proves his Satan's head. Pour into strengthless souls he speaks and life into the dead and life into. and see the riches of His grace, beyond of love that compass me, would all mankind embrace, would all mankind embrace. Just as I show, is saying truth proclaim. Tis all my business here below to cry, behold the Lamb. To cry, behold the Lamb. <clears throat> Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our reading today takes place in Capernaum, a fishing village to the north of Lake Galilee and the base for much of Jesus' ministry. Today, it is an incredibly quiet place, split between two churches, one Franciscan and the other Greek Orthodox, the ruins partially excavated. The village still sits on the shore of the vast Lake Galilee, surrounded by vineyards and rolling hills. In Jesus' day, it was a bustling fishing village, comprising of a thousand people, along with Bethsaida, five miles away. It was the home of Jesus' disciples, Peter, James and John, the fishermen, and Andrew, Levi the tax collector too. We always hear of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem or his coming from Nazareth, but for most of his ministry, this was his hometown. This was where he belonged. This was probably where Jesus first called his disciples along the shore of the Lake Galilee. It is where he started his preaching ministry, and it's the site of his most famous healing, the healing of the paralysed man who's dropped down through the broken roof. 
Mark tells us that after Jesus' baptism, wilderness experience, and the calling of those first disciples, he enters the synagogue of Capernaum, that is the assembly of Capernaum, the, the, the place where Jews went to worship. And he enters it on the Sabbath day and he began to preach. And there isn't anything particularly unusual about this. Jesus was a religiously observant Jew beyond the age of accountability. And so he would have been encouraged to read the law and the prophets in the assembly of the people. But what is unusual is the way in which Jesus spoke. We are told that he spoke with authority, by which it means he gave a direct and decisive interpretation of God's word. His teaching wasn't derivative. He wasn't quoting this great rabbi or that great rabbi. He was giving the final word on the word of God. Um, and in that, it wasn't like the rabbis of the time or like the preachers of today. Yes, we have the spirit of God within us, but we also rely on, on the scholarship of Christians throughout the ages. We listen to preachers and teachers that we admire. And then we speak with or without notes. We offer our thoughts on the readings. Gone. Gone are the days when preachers were ten foot above contradiction in their pulpits. And whilst I think we ought to respect our preachers, I generally feel that it's a good thing that we don't idolise them. Good preachers aren't there to take the place of Jesus. They are here to point the way to him. Jesus isn't pointing beyond himself in the way that he teaches here. He is the embodied word of God, the one of whom the scriptures speak and the one to whom the scriptures point. And he is the one who doesn't just tell us what God is like, but the one who in his life shows us. He is the perfect image of the invisible God. And that's why we see such a crazy reaction to him. He is there preaching in the midst of the assembly and this man with an unclean spirit comes out of the crowd screaming, What do you want to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know that you are the Holy One of God. Holiness causes such a reaction because it reveals our evil, our unrighteousness, our sin. And none of us likes to be shown up. We, we can get hung up on the idea of demons today. But I think one of the most clearly demonic reactions is the reaction within us to assume that because somebody shows us something that we're doing that is wrong, that they hate us or want to destroy us. There is something very, very wrong about that instinct and response. A good father, after all, disciplines his children. He doesn't discipline them because he hates them, but because he loves them. But let's take the scene uh, that we are presented with seriously for a moment. This clearly a deranged man enters the assembly of the synagogue and interrupts the meeting. Uh, and picture the surprise and the awkwardness of the occasion. The elders of the synagogue looking at one another going, you know, what do we do now? But Jesus calmly takes control of the situation. He doesn't just speak with authority. His actions demonstrate that he has authority. Be quiet. Come out of them. My friend and colleague uh, Nick Stanion describes 
what happens next in his blog, Marking the Moment. He, res he, he describes it like this. In response, the man suddenly convulsed and screamed loudly, but then there was a quiet and a calm, and that haunted look disappeared from his eyes. The tension across his shoulders relaxed. He stood open-mouthed, looking shyly around, blinking as if he had just woken from a trance. It took him a while to get his bearings and understand where he was. But then came peace. The crowd were full of questions. Who, who was this preacher? Where had he come from? How did he come to speak with such authority? And what does all of this mean? Of course, later, Jesus' enemies would accuse him of driving out demons by the power of the prince of demons. And Jesus would rubbish the idea by indicating that he had come to deliver people from evil, to bind up the strong man in that parable. What does this, though, reveal to us of God? Well, it confirms what we should already know, that God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, that God is light and in him there is no shadow of darkness. Sarah and I have been watching the Star Wars movies, great films, but we have to remember that God is not the force. There is no balance to be found in him. There is no yin and yang with God. He is not partly good and partly evil. He is pure light. And when the light shines, the shadows cannot help but jump back. When God speaks, Satan is silenced. Chaos is ended, and as Nick indicates, peace comes. Satan is not the equal and opposite of God. Satan is no match for God. The outcome is never in doubt. God wins, and Jesus has the victory. Maybe. To you, it doesn't feel like that right now. Maybe you feel frustrated and weary, grief-stricken and defeated, filled with questions and sorrows and that you don't know where to take. Maybe you are physically exhausted, emotionally burnt out, even spiritually oppressed. I want you this Sunday to take that to Jesus. I want you to allow him the authority in your life. I want you to invite his love and holiness to speak, to silence the accuser and to give you peace. Because that is what Jesus has come to bring. He's not come to destroy. He has come to redeem. To bring peace. So in this next song, I'd like you to use it to invite Jesus to take that place of honour and supremacy in your life. To speak and have authority. We sing Jesus shall take the highest honour. Jesus shall take the highest praise. Jesus shall take the highest honor. Jesus shall take the highest praise. Let all earth join heaven in exalted. Which is above all other names. Let's bow the knee in humble adoration. For at his name every knee must bow. Let every tongue confess he is Christ, God's only Son. 
sovereign Lord, we give you glory now. For, O oh Lord, our blessing and power belongs to you. session at this time of pandemic. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those who are most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their own health or making enough money to pay their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when the schools close, remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips, remember those that have no place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbours. Amen. proclaims it, for by his power each tree and flower was burned and made. Jesus is Lord, the universe declares it, sun, moon and stars in heaven cry, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, praise him with alleluia. She came to die in pain on Calvary's tree. Jesus is Lord, from him all I proceeding, yet gave his life a ransom, thus setting us free. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, praise 
praise Him with hallelujahs, for Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, for sin the mighty conqueror, from death he rose, and all his foes shall own his name. Jesus is Lord, God sends his Holy Spirit, Show my works of power that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Praise Him with hallelujahs, for Jesus is Lord. Bless and protect and guide each one of us and anyone who needs our love. May our hearts feel the beat of God's love for all. As we reach out to each other with the healing power of the Holy Spirit, may we be filled with the love and the understanding of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, so that we may be signs of God's mercy to those whom we love and to those whom we serve on this day and on every day. Amen. We'll walk the land with hearts on fire and every step will be a prayer. Hope is rising, new day dawning, sound of singing, Fills the air. Two thousand years, and still the flame is burning bright across the land. Hearts are waiting, longing, aching for awakening once again. Let the flame burn brighter. In the heart of the darkness, turning night to glorious day. Let the song grow louder as our love grows stronger. Let it shine. Let it shine. We'll walk for truth. flame burn brighter in the heart of the darkness, turning night to glorious day. Let the song grow louder as our love grows stronger. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let the flame burn brighter in the heart of the darkness, turning night to glorious day. Let the song grow louder as our love grows stronger. Let it shine. Let it shine.